So we'll start with the card wall here. As you'll see, these columns at the top represent ticket statuses, and they're all customizable according to your team's specific uh, workflow. So a lot of our users find that this way of viewing the tickets is really helpful because you can easily change statuses by moving them from column to column throughout their workflow. There are also a few filters that we've got available which allow you to filter by like tags or priorities and you can also save these filters by selecting to save it at the bottom. You can name it and you can even ma make it visible so that the rest of your team can use these filters as well. And if I scroll down to look at my filters up here, then I'll see that the filter has now shown up under the shared with team filters section, which means anyone on my team can see the filters. And up here at the top, you've got the ability to sort by priority and due date, which we find are the most commonly used uh, filters by our customers. And now we'll jump over to the list view, which as you can see is a very text heavy way of looking at your tickets. And up here at the top left, we've got the same ability to group your tickets by a variety of fields, um, especially custom fields. So most of the ones at the bottom that you see there are actually custom fields. Now I can also do batch ticket operations. So if I select a few tickets and then go up to bulk changes, I can edit several tickets at once with any field that I've already set to be a part of my tickets. And then up here you can see that the filters are going to work the same way in the list view as they would in the card wall view. And you can see if I scroll down that the filter that I created in the card wall view carried over to the list view as well. Now if I want to create a new ticket, I can come up here to the top left if I'm in the tickets tool. Or I can go to the plus menu on the top from any location in Assembla to create a new ticket. And once the ticket editor is open, I can enter a summary for the ticket, which is like the ticket's title. And then I can also write in a description of whatever the ticket purpose is. And I can also at or mention my uh, colleagues by their username. And if you've got colleagues who don't log into Assembly very often, you can even do what we like to call a bang mention. So you add an exclamation point and it will send them an email regardless of their email notification settings. I can also add followers really easily down here. I'll just type Matt's name in and I can add him as a follower um, however I'd like. I could also assign it to Matt so that he'll be automatically followed and he'll be unable to unfollow that ticket so long as he's assigned to it. There are a number of other fields that you can choose here as well as creating custom fields. And each ticket has several sub tabs. We've got the attachments ticket to attach files. Um, we've got related tickets, so you can add existing tickets or new tickets in a variety of different relations. We've got parent child, task subtask, a bunch of them. Uh, we, you can also see all the followers and add them really easily, as well as merge requests and time worked on a project. If you use the time tracking tool, this is very helpful. And as you'll see, most of the information that's in the subtabs is also shown on the left side of the ticket as well in abbreviated form. Now one thing that a lot of our users like to do is create a custom field in their tickets called wiki. And then they can use the wiki tool and drop URLs of certain wiki pages in the tickets. So a lot of our users will um, put white papers in the wiki or even like step-by-step how-to guides for certain um, processes. It helps a lot with onboarding new users to be able to refer to like a set of instructions for a certain task. And then in conjunction with that, Assemble also offers a files tool, which basically just allows users to upload files that they'd like to make available to everybody in the space. And if you'd like, you can download a file just by clicking right on the link there. Um, you can also upload these files from your local machine or import them from Google Drive or from Dropbox.